Hello and welcome to LabRite. Today I'm going to show you how to turn a box standard and mediocre shooting hammer shot into a dark, sleek, mean, hard shooting workhorse of a blaster like this that will serve you well in a zombie apocalypse game or in a more Fallout inspired apocalypse, post apocalypse lab. So if this is something that interests you, stay tuned and I show you exactly how I made this. I start this build by marking and then proceeding to hack off everything that I don't think needs to be on this gun. Just a standard wood saw will do you well to saw through the plastic. Wearing a breathe protection mask is advised so you don't inhale the plastic dust. And for this build I basically decided that all this stuff beneath the drum is not needed. With everything removed from the gun that I don't want, it is time to open it up. So take a fitting screwdriver and take out all of the screws holding these together. Make sure to collect them all so you don't lose any of them. Once all of the screws are removed, it's easy to open this up. At this point, I suggest you take a picture so it's easier to put it back together. There are some more screws that are holding the interior pieces and mechanics of the gun in place. Just as before, appropriate screwdriver, remove them, collect all the screws, collect all the parts. Once you take out the spring, this comes apart pretty easily. Once you've taken all of it apart, it is time to sand the shell of the gun. Every surface needs to be at least touched and roughened up a bit, so color will stick to it. But at this point I'm also sanding out any of the logos that are embossed in the frame, because I don't want any Nerf logos on my post apocalyptic revolver. Once everything is disassembled and sanded to satisfaction, it is time to prime it. This is literally the cheapest black primer that I could find on Amazon, but it works pretty well. I agree with it. And give everything a good coat of paint. Try not to paint too vigorously, so don't have any running paint noses. But in my experience, it's not that difficult and you can slap a lot of paint on here. Notice I've got a 8-shot replacement drum on that painting table. I've 3D printed that myself, but you can find similar replacement parts for popular Nerf products on Etsy or eBay. But if you happen to have a 3D printer or know someone who has, I'll leave a link to the 3D file for this particular drum in the description down below. I'm also putting in a blaster parts tuning kit in here with some metal parts, namely hammer, trigger and the in-between part and a harder spring. So once this is done, 
this will shoot about 50% harder, maybe twice as hard. But to install that, I have to disassemble the stock parts, which is a bit tricky. They are held together by pins and you have to hammer them out with a small nail and a hammer and an anvil if you have it or another hard surface just position the pin right next to your hard surface and then gently hammer it out notice it's fatter on one end than it is on the other so you can only hammer them out in one direction which took me a embarrassingly long while to figure out in which direction to hammer it out but putting it back together was much easier with the help of some pliers once this is pinned back together it is time to lubricate the metal parts so they will work well and now it's time to take out the photo you've taken before disassembling this and puzzle it all back together.
about at this point I decided that the gun was too light to my taste so I used hot glue and some lead string some curtain string to put a bit more weight in the handle make sure if you're gluing this in there that you're not interfering with the mechanism of the gun which takes up most of the space in the handle I'm also using the hot glue as a filler material to fill in cover all of the holes that I've cut into the frame of the gun bit of cardboard also helps you so the filler material doesn't flow too far into the mechanism of the gun. Once the hot glue has cooled down you can easily carve it into shape, cut it into shape with a sharp knife and sand it and after that it is time to apply some more black primer to finish the base paint job. Notice that there are countries in the world that require these orange parts at the tip of the gun. If in doubt, check your local laws. To finish the paint job, I use a fine makeup brush, a fine but cheap makeup brush, and some silver miniature paint, and I do a silver dry brush. This gives it a worn out look, a gently worn out look. If you use a rougher brush and do a dry brush job, it looks more choppy, more scratched. But this is an easy technique to highlight all of the edges. So get some silver paint into your brush, then get most of it, almost all of it, out again on a piece of paper, and then start brushing gently over the whole thing, especially on the edges, until you get the required amount of highlights. Since the hammer shop has molded into its plastic, this look as if though the handle has been wrapped in something and you can't really sand that out without compromising the material strength of the handle i decided i'd wrap it in some spare cloth for real so i got a length of cloth here put some of my leather glue in there just so it holds better and then i wrap the whole thing and that finishes the build. All that is left to do is take it out and give it a try, see how it shoots. As always, thanks for watching and until next time.